Bnei David. This is the, uh, the most important, perhaps, uh, educational facility. You know, it's like the, uh, the religious seminary that is high, most highest, uh, you know, considered to be the most important in terms of this is an army uh, academy in which army officers are sent to, to study, to study the Torah and the Talmud. So in the settlement of Eli at this academy, you have rabbis teaching these lectures, and I'm just going to give you some quotes directly from the Hebrew so you can evaluate what kind of messages are being put forth and passed on. So here's Rabbi Eliezer Kashtiel, and this is what he has to say to his students. Due to the abolition of legal slavery, there are now deficiencies since no one is responsible for the property, right? Human's property. With the help of God, it will return. Slavery will return. So who are going to be these slaves? Oh. The non-Jews will want to be our slaves, he says. Being the slave of a Jew is the best. They must be slaves. They want to be slaves. Instead of wandering the streets, being foolish and violent, harming one another, now his life begins. All around us, there are nations with genetic problems. Ask any simple Arab where he wants to be. He wants to be under the occupation. Why? Because they have a genetic problem. They don't know how to run a country. They don't know how to do anything. Look at the state of them. This sounds kind of racist. Uh, yeah, he goes on. He says, yeah, of course racism exists. Are we unaware that there are different races in the world? Is it a secret? Is it untrue? What can you do? It's true. Yes, we're racists. We believe in racism. Correct. There are races in the world, and gen nations have genetic attributes. So it requires of us to consider how to help them. Racial differences are real, and this is precisely a reason to offer help. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, that's really something. This is the premier, you know, military academy um, in the state of Israel. Wow, okay, but maybe this is just one off. You know, maybe this guy's an exception to the rule. Surely this can't be the bulk of what they're teaching, right? Um, okay, so we move on. Here's another rabbi, Giora Redler, and what he teaches, he has a, takes a different tack. What he'll have to say is about the Holocaust. He says, the Holocaust wasn't really about killing the Jews. That's not the Holocaust. Okay, uh, so what is the Holocaust? All those excuses that it was ideological or systematic, that's nonsense. Because it was out of ideology, in a way, it was more moral than if it was just people just murdering, right? Humanism, the whole secular culture of believing in man, that is the Holocaust, he says. The real Holocaust is to be pluralistic, to believe in man, that is called Holocaust. Oh. For many years already, God has been screaming that the diaspora is over, but people don't listen to him, and that is their disease, which must be cured by the Holocaust. Oh. So Jewish people living anywhere in the world other than the state of Israel, that's a disease, and the cure for this disease is to genocide said Jews. Wow. That's you know, about as revisionist as you're going to get. That's, that's pretty sickening stuff. And then he goes on. In relative terms, the logic of the Germans was internally consistent. Hitler said that a group of people, a certain group in the population, is the source of evil for all humanity. They cause evil to humanity, and therefore, they must be exterminated. Okay, so let's start with the question. He says, was Hitler right or not? Seems like a pretty obvious answer, right? But you are su be surprised. He says, he is the most righteous person possible. Of course he was right in every word he said. Talking about Adolf Hitler. There is the, he goes on to explain, right? What does he mean by this? There is the masculine world that wages war, that is concerned with respect. And then there is the soft, moral, feminine world of turning the other cheek. This is how he, he you know, th these are the intonations that he, he actually uses when he gives it. You can watch it all online, of course. Incidentally, these videos are easily accessible. And it's the Jews that carry on that tradition, trying to ruin all of humanity, and therefore, they are the real enemy. He is on the wrong side, but otherwise, he is 100% correct. So, briefly, he's saying Hitler 
um, is ascribing, is saying you know, that the correct way to be is strong, to believe that might makes right. And if you, in fact, you know, believe in, just, in, in mercy, in being merciful to the other, then that is you know, the most evil thing that humanity can do. Okay? And so Hitler was incorrect in ascribing that feminine, merciful quality to Jews. In fact, it, you know, it wasn't Jews, but that attitude to believe that might makes right and that mercy is, is evil, that's 100% correct, according to Rabbi Giorg Redler at Israel's top military academy. Okay, David, surely, you know, these are just, you know, two exceptions to the rule. This, there must be more. Unfortunately, these aren't the exceptions. These are the rules. So we'll hear from another rabbi at that academy, Yosef Kellner. And he has a lecture on another topic. He says that to, to not follow the Torah and commandments is lack of morality and national treason. So if you're a Jewish person and you don't follow all the you know, minutia of rules and regulations written in the Talmud, then you are a traitor to the Jewish people. In fact, it's called genociding a people, he says. That's genocide, to, not be, to be a secular Jew. You are not a national criminal, you are an international criminal. It's called crime against humanity. So now, can a nation protect itself from the traitors within? According to most, traitors are sentenced to a bullet in the head, everywhere. For those who betray them, every sanction is legitimate, up to a bullet in the head. Wow. So, um, slavery, thumbs up, we need to bring it back. The Holocaust, you know, Hitler was 100% correct, the most moral person possible. And if you're a secular Jew, you are sentenced to death, you deserve to die. If I'm summing up, summarizing the, the you know the ideology of the top military academy in the state of Israel, paid for with my tax money. Now, again, you're going to say, "Oh, this is some outlier. Surely this academy isn't important. Surely these people are condemned. Come on, this is." the headmaster of the academy, Eli Sadan, and here he is a couple years ago receiving the Israel Prize, the highest prize in the country. Okay, Receiving it from the education minister at that time. You know, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is there congratulating him. Okay? Now, I should point out that uh, coming up on the, the April elections that we just held a few months back, um, you know, of course, Everyone running for election wanted to come to this important academy to be able to speak to the students and, you know, kind of uh, get them excited about the idea of voting for them, perhaps. But the headmaster did not allow Bennett, the education minister, and he did not allow Netanyahu, the prime minister, to speak to the students. The only politician he allowed to speak to the students was his favorite politician, and that's this man, uh, who, you know previously the chief rabbi of the Israeli army, now Netanyahu just made him the most recent education minister. This is our new education minister, Rafi Peretz. And Rafi Peretz, what does he do now that he's our education minister? Well, if you can imagine this, he gives a prize to, to who? Who does he give a prize to? This man, Yitzhak Ginsburg. Now, I'm going to be bombarding you with names and I don't expect you to remember almost any of them, because come on, right? But if you're going to remember one name, maybe just this one, because this is probably the most racist rabbi in the country, uh, and, and quite sickening and at that. He, a decade ago, uh, published a book called The King's Torah, or Torah Tamelech. And this book, it's a, like a theological treatise. It asks the question, under what circumstances may a Jew kill a non-Jew? And he comes to the conclusion that pretty much under any circumstance, he writes there, there is justification for killing babies if it is clear that they will grow up to harm us. So, this is the man who receives a prize from Israel's education minister. Essentially, you know, publishing a Gentile murdering manual. Oh, so what, they didn't report this in the Basler Zeitung? 
You know, so, I mean, is this not ridiculous that I have to fly all the way over here and burn up all these fossil fuels to explain this to you, this basic stuff? 